I'm really taken by something you said earlier about the child not being able to express. Mm -hmm. And it's it's something I've been getting in, well, delving into a lot with art and art wellness, you know, coming from a place of emptying and trusting and just yeah. expressing whatever wants to come out. And it's it's quite similar to things you see in maybe aesthetic dance. Um and people really struggle to let go, to allow themselves to just create freely, which it's like there's so many creative barriers and people don't think that they are an artist, but they are. Yes. Yeah. It's, they, they have this power within them at all times. And if they tapped into it, they could consciously use it to create so many different things in life um but i i really am curious to hear your thoughts on perhaps whether it's the act of expression and inner child expression that helps that healing process or helps us to get more into the right side of the brain or to tap more into the inner child well start stepping into that childlike wonder just pretend just go into the childlike wonder, pretend, you know? So the thing with this is that there's, there's something that it's a little unfair. I got to explain what I'm doing here is, is that uh, there's being an empath, right? It's a double-edged sword. You can pick up a lot of things, but you can also project. Yeah. The other half of the empath is the projector. You're you're the projector of delightful emotions. Now, you have something in your brain called mirror neurons. And when I go into a state here, you're trying to make sense of what I'm doing, so you step into the state yourself. So yeah. when I when I went into childlike wonder, right, it's hard for you to stay out of it. So you get the experience of it and you blow some beliefs that you can't go into it because you just did. You see? Tell me, tell yeah. me the audience <laughs> what you're feeling right now. Just sitting here and look at me. I feel, I feel like I want to giggle. And yeah. so let's I feel go. like the whole <laughs> <laughs> I feel like things don't like you know the questions that I'm asking don't even really need to make sense and they don't even need to be answered because they just you know it doesn't need to be understood from this place. No, it's just exactly. See, God conscious like logic. <laughs> God consciousness is expansion, more magic, more love, more joy, more, you know, just like a little child. It's like, you know, <laughs> right? And they used to think that God was some sort of bearded character, all crusty, sitting down on a throne somewhere, pointing his finger. And it isn't. It's a child who's really curious about what it is. And it needs you to help explore. But then there came that programming at about six years old. Boom. Mm. And then traumas happen to us, whatever. One of the traumas is being ripped out of your home and put into a school. That's a trauma. Wow. Yeah, and people say, like, 99% of humans have an abandonment wound if you were cut from an umbilical cord. You're instantly, you no longer have access to that life force. That's right. I remember my dad telling me that 
the, the worst day of his life was putting me on the bus to go to school. And he just cried after. And I think if parents were really aware of their emotions, they probably would too, any other parent. What are we doing? What's always been done? What's always been done? The hypnosis continues. Watch the water. We keep, <laughs> we keep buying into it. We keep giving it power. What would other people think if I didn't send my kids to school? Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? I worked with um I worked with children when I had the physical office. Um sometimes parents would bring in their kids, right? The little ones. He's so unruly. He is so unruly. I says, really? Yeah. And so I, I says, well, let me talk to him a little bit. And so I talked to him and whatever. I'd say, where are you from? And he'd go, well, 2648, 178th Street. And I go, no. I said, where are you from? And all of a sudden, poof, I'd get these profound answers out of these kids. Wow. Then I'd talk to the parents and I'd go, you see, your child doesn't have a problem. That's what happens when you try to shove a God in a box. You get resistance. Why don't you explore who your child is? Find out who your child really is. You know, Steph, I had this guy, this this guy, this little kid, one of the little kids that I worked with, and I asked him the same question, where are you from? And he gave me his home address, and I go, no, where are you from? And he didn't say a word, he just looked at me. And when he looked at me, boom, telepathic communication started happening right away. I started getting wow. the whole thing. And this kid was just had this smile on this love this smile and he was just yeah i said thank you so much for sharing that with me i says could you do me a favor could you turn to mom and do the same thing for her and so he did he turned to mom and he centered this broadcast and you could tell as soon as it hit her because the tears just started to flow and I said, yeah, you know, we have to realize that they're here to teach us, not the other way around. They're, that is so profound. It is I so, can't help but wonder. Like, that's the, you go. <laughs> you can't help wonder what, dear? <laughs> Had you never have met those children, how their lives would have been? Because, yeah, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> Steph, even even to be even to be that one person one time in their life that actually seen them, that actually seen them is is worth more than any any gold or anything. Uh, because finally they were they they were actually recognized by somebody in a world that doesn't want to recognize them at all right they want them to be the mask we really as human beings have to question what we're doing here when it comes to this process of pushing a child who the child really is that came in from source energy who they really are, pushing that down and then programming them to live an alternate life that nobody's happy with. Everybody hates their friggin' life. Why? Because they're not really who they are. They're not authentic in their own life. I 
I'm starting to think so a lot of a lot of the teachings online talk about the two sides of the brain the left being masculine and the right being feminine and the left being logical and the right being creative and there's other teachings that talk about trying to find the middle brain and and creating oneness through moving through kind of dualistic principles but now from this place where I sit I'm really wondering trying to apply a structure or a process over the right side of the brain saying it's feminine and saying that the other side is masculine is perhaps a part of the problem because it doesn't need to be labeled because it just is when I when I here's here's something to 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 connect with that to make it to verify what you're talking about was back in the day when I was working with uh, a big big hypnotherapy clinic we had and and it's hard to believe but the way that we had this spaced out it worked we had over 3,500 clients moving through the system at any given time so there was wow. a great, great big amphitheater. Uh, where they all went in for their daily dose of whatever that, you know, we were administering that day. And, but they got to see a hypnotherapist when they first started. uh, I think it was once, yeah, once a week for a month. And then after their first month was up, then it was twice a week. I mean, every second week. And then it was once a month. So you can see how that opened up to have more clients come through. But anyway, what I'm getting at is, it was a huge clinic, and we were working with lots and lots of clients. And in, this happens to me, in in the description, I got so good at describing everything that I forgot what my original thing was. What was it? What was I talking (laughs) about? We were (laughs) talking. I love it. We're talking about uh, the structure or system of masculine left brain, feminine right brain, and how this correlates. Well, some people say, you know, because the left brain governs the right side of the body, that the right side of the body is masculine and vice versa. Whereas I was one like questioning, perhaps applying a structure to this infinite part of ourselves is actually keeping us in the old system (laughs) now i I remember you thank you (laughs) bringing me back Uh, uh, so at the time i was asking because i had a really perplexing kind of question i went okay i know i said to my my teacher at the time i said i I know that this part of the brain can heal anything in the body. It doesn't care. It doesn't know difficulty. It'll heal it in a second. But yet I'm giving it suggestions or telling it what to do. Who the fuck am I? Why am I telling it what to do? When it has the power to do that, Anyway, what's really going on here? And then I found out the answer. The answer wasn't that our unconscious, our subconscious is full of all these unproductive behaviors, la, 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 that they all talk about. That's not it at all. What's the problem is the conscious mind, and the conscious mind is limited to the box. And the unconscious is tied. It can't do Unless that conscious mind asks. And so they went in back in the day with Freud and said that the, the, the subconscious is full of all these unproductive behaviors, and it's, a, it's not true. But everybody hated their unconscious on some level. So now here's another division, right? We don't like our unconscious because it's full of all these things, and how are we ever <laughs> going to get to the end of this treadmill of beliefs and ideas and things that we, or I could be a lifetime at this. Sure you could. Or you could understand what the real problem is, 
The real problem is it's the conscious mind is locked in a box and the unconscious can't do anything unless that conscious mind. So that changed my suggestions completely. My suggestions then become more for the conscious mind to open up to allow this greatness that's already within them through. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So backwards and upside down. Now we know that the same ones that like to hypnotize us are taking everything and turning it upside down and and crooked, right? And so I start putting it back the way it is supposed to be. That's all. And I notice what happens. So I'm in a practice for a reason, right? Because I practice. Fascinating. Um, (laughs) Mm. The the bottom line is I love people and I love seeing them free. And, uh, you know, I'll go, I'll, I'll go through whatever I need to go through to figure out how to help people become freer and freer. And what has been done? to keep us away from seeing that. Like this here part of your brain, you know, they call it the old reptilian brain and all of this stuff and a little uh, so you don't go in there. But if you ever take a journey right down here into what's called midbrain, you take a deep breath in, you slowly exhale and you let your awareness drop to midbrain. You start seeing peripherally. Now, as you're looking at me peripherally, I start changing. I'm not, my face changes. You might see the aura around me. Isn't that cool? If you want a real trip, take another deep breath in, slowly exhale, and now move to the back of your brain. That's wild, eh? Even more auras. What are you seeing? Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Everything like like you've turned to light. So the thing of it is you didn't you didn't need a watch. You didn't need me to tell you you're getting sleepier and sleepier. You just went in there. Right? yeah yeah that was amazing thank you now that you're in there do you want to play with something okay i've come out but i'll go back in (laughs) okay and then we just move back to the back of our mind and just repeat after me oh my beloved goddess oh my beloved goddess that I am, that I am, that I am, that I am, that I am. Come forth from where I put you. Come forth from where I put you. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Now breathe in deeply. You notice the tinglings in your, are you getting any tingling? Yeah, it feels like reverberating. Uh, kind of. In ancient Egypt, you see a lot of pit, pit, a lot of petitions, pictures of of the gods and goddesses with wings coming out of the head. I just felt like I had wings coming out of my body as you were doing that process. So yes, that resonates. <laughs> Welcome home. You are amazing. Welcome home, goddess. I'm pleased to meet you. Thank you. It's always a delight to see the God awakening in people. To be recognized, to see, to say hello to that part of people. It's so important. Because it brings them to life. Yeah. Yeah. I love that so much. You are amazing. 
<laughs> I feel like I could literally fly away and fly out my window and just go exploring it unless I don't feel chained. This is phenomenal. Here's an old story about you and me and all of humanity. You see, a lot of people don't realize that God died in you so that you could resurrect the God within. It's all part of this interesting game that we joined in on here. It's time to roll the stone away, step out of your tomb, and stand in the light. You need to locate it, recognize it, and then call it forward. Oh, my beloved God that I am, come forth from where I bury you. Even though things are getting darker and darker by the minute, fear not, for this is how you set it up. The darkness brings on the light in you. So call it forward. Oh, and don't forget to dance in your creation. Through your awareness, you simply breathe yourself back to life and awaken that God within. And your reality is yours alone. Move beyond the critic that'll tell you that this isn't real, and you'll be fine.
It is time to resurrect God within you. Because nothing else will save you.